Hi folks, uh, welcome to Coffee with Job. I'm sorry, this is now uh, iced coffee with Job because it's in the afternoon. And um, the one that I did this morning, I did down at the river. I didn't put the mic in properly. And so all you heard was the sound of running water. And I, I know one or two of you are a wee bit hard of hearing. So we are turning again to Job chapter 24. Oh, before we go any further, I mentioned yesterday Midnight Mass. Now, that, I wasn't mentioning that to recommend it uh, unless you're into vampire stuff. It, it, it's a shame. It could have been such a good program and yet it just turned into vampire horror and we've got enough horror in the real world without having that. But let me read Job 24 and verse 18. This is speaking about the wicked. Yet they are on the foam of the, on the surface of the water. Their portion of the land is cursed, so that no one goes to the vineyards. As heat and drought snatch away the melted snow, so the grave snatches away those who have sinned. The womb forgets them, the worm feasts on them, the wicked are no longer remembered, but are broken like a tree. They prey on the barren and childless woman, and to the widow they show no kindness. But God drags away the mighty by his power. Though they become established, they have no assurance of life. He may let them rest in a feeling of security, but his eyes are on their ways. For a little while they are exalted and then they are gone. They are brought low and gathered up like all others. They are cut off like ears of corn. If this is not so, who can prove me false and reduce my words to nothing? Job's talking about the wicked within the world. And I was reading in Micah 7 the other day. The faithful have been swept from the land. Not one up per upright person remains. Everyone lies in wait to shed blood. They hunt each other with nets. Both hands are skilled in doing evil. The ruler demands gifts. The judge accepts bribes. The powerful dictate what they desire. They all conspire together. Uh, that description, the ruler demands gifts. The judge accepts bribes. The powerful dictate what they desire. I think that describes a lot of our world. One of the things I'm greatly concerned about is the increasing trend towards authoritarianism. And the non-Christian despairs, the Christian knows that there is an authority above all these authorities. And Job talks about what's going to happen to them. He talks about how they will be swept away. Verse 20, for example, what does he say there? He says, the womb forgets them, even their mother forgets them. The worm feasts on them, these bodies that they feed, that they pamper, that they indulge. These bodies, the worms are going to eat them. No one will remember them. Now, in chapter 21, it seems as though Job was arguing against this. And is this him now saying, well, I accept this? I think he probably always did accept it, that there was an ultimate day of justice for the wicked. What he didn't accept was that he was being directly punished for his own sin. The description of the wicked is interesting, isn't it? They wrong the barren, childless woman, one of the weakest members of society in that, in that culture. And again, I think in our culture, that it's the poor and it's the weak and it's the child in the womb who are the most discriminated against and oppressed by people who say they're doing things on behalf of the oppressed, which is, always gets me. But God sees, it says, his eyes are on the wicked. He doesn't destroy them immediately. It's not, you do something bad, bang, then you're hit. They shake their fists at God and they think they get away with it. I mean, I watch on television or read in the newspaper or hear people mocking and, and abusing and they think they're going to get away, but no. His eyes are on their ways. You know, you and I, what we do in the dark, if you like, we looked at that yesterday. God knows. God knows. We don't get away with things. And that would cause us all to despair if it wasn't for this other verse from Micah 7. Who is a God like you who pardons sin and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all our iniquities into the depths of the sea. Wow. Wow. Who is a God like you? who forgives, who pardons sins and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance.
Well, there's the thunderstorm coming in, and I think it's time for me to go. I will see you on Sunday for uh, Romans, and I'll see you next Monday for Coffee with Joe. God bless you, and thank you for all of you who've got in contact as well. It's really appreciated. Bye.